Be very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking at SHOT Show 2020. Let's talk about the four-wheeled elephant in the room real quickly here. The day before I flew out to Las Vegas, I injured my knee. Uh, so yeah, that, that is what it is. We're gonna be scooting around SHOT Show 2020. Um, but anyway, I've known about SHOT Show my whole life or since I was like a little kid and I never thought I'd attend, but I guess Texas Plinking is media enough to attend. So that's pretty cool. But versus normal media like these guys, um, I have the privilege of not working for anyone, so I get to show you guys all the fun stuff only. So versus uh, going, you know, booth to booth and pretending to be enthusiastic on a uh, mundane release, I'm only going to show you guys stuff that I think is kind of interesting. So with that said, here's SHOT Show 2020. All right, first challenge of SHOT Show. I'm getting good. Make fun of my scooter one more time. That's right. This right here is uh, actually international action. I've only shot one, which is a 300 Win Mag. This one, they are just bulletproof actions. Just some of the slickest stuff. Yeah, this is the ASR. This is a semi-auto 338 Lapua. Vitrix Tormentum Meal Mile. Two L's, I don't know. Let's go to uh, something I can pronounce. So y'all recognize this. I made a video with my 20s a while ago, but the news now is you have the option uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. So that's pretty cool. All right, you guys would know I just recently got a 17 myself. Need to trick it out to this level, huh? Suppress it and uh, maybe a little bit of a Coca-Cola distributor. I believe that's what it is. Might double as a grenade launcher as well. Makes the 50 BMG look like a little 22 long rifle. What is this, a 50 BMG? The suppressor itself, good God. Just to give you some perspective. The whole suppressor to suppress the 50 BMG bolt action. Holy crap. Yeah, Kadex Defense. Again, a CDX MC. This one here. I gotta look that up, man. That just looks like money. So the $7,200 rifle looks like. I'm telling you, you pay the premium when you go HK, but they are sweet. The mags are pretty sweet, proprietary. That's probably a, I don't even know, $100 mag or more if I had to guess. Pretty good for uh, security or pest control. I think this is a belt-fed grenade launcher. Uh, ranges out to 1,500 yards. I'm not gonna lie, ever since I got my uh, M82 about, what, a year and a half ago, I always thought it'd be hilarious to get a suppressed M107 in addition to it, and FDE, of course, but here's an M107 suppressed in black. This one's got the 20-inch barrel from the look of it, but yeah, they changed a little bit up, not a whole lot from M82 to M107, but the biggest thing is they changed some parts internally and gave it a muzzle brake that takes their new um, quick detach and quick attach suppressor from Barrett. Yeah, I need it. I need it bad. But I cannot get rid of the M82, man. They'll, uh, they'll look good together. Uh, the question is, if I were to get it, I would want it suppressed. So do I go 20-inch barrel like this one particularly, because I already have the 29 on that one, or do I just go balls to the wall again and then have two 29-inch barrel M82 M107? Because can you imagine this thing, 29-inch barrel with a suppressor? It'd be a cannon. All right, so I've made a video with my M1A National Match with the walnut wood. If you guys saw that, you would know just how much I love the M1A. But here is pretty cool because I've got a 22 inch barrel on mine. They've make them down to 16 and a quarter inch barrel. So you can see the whole package is a little bit shorter. All right, while we're here, you guys know I have to stop by my friends at Smith & Wesson, make a lot of videos with their stuff. Check this out here. Look at that, no muzzle brake. That's a snub nose. That is so cool. I like the green grip too. And again, without the flutes, that thing just looks like the bottom end of like a Coke can. So yeah, that thing's nutty. Can you imagine a 460 or 500 snub? I'm used to like the long barrel with the compensator. That thing's got to absolutely break your wrist. I like that. Oh, here we go. That's the Dirty Harry gun right there. I made a video with the 629 Stealth Hunter, which is like a really, really modernized 44 Magnum, but Model 29, Dirty Harry right there. It's gorgeous. Model 327 TRR8, that's really cool. So my first Smith & Wesson was the uh, 686 Plus, a seven shot. This right here, look at that. Eight shot 357 Magnum. That is way, way cool. Got a rail on top here and bottom. Uh, so if you want any kind of light attachment on top, a little red dot on an eight shot performance center 357 revolver. It's on my list as well. Bumped into uh, it's a Kentucky ballistics wall here at Shot Show 2020, scooting around. So I had to say hi. Actually met him while we we're in Springfield, Massachusetts, checking out uh, Smith and Weston. So anyway, if you don't know him, you gotta check him out. He's always doing some fun stuff, blowing up melons. But I told him when you're in Austin, Texas or North. 
Austin. We got to yeah. do some uh, some kind of collaboration. Sure. Absolutely. You're sure. the one who made me think, huh? Maybe a snub nose 460 isn't too bad. Because I <laughs> when I got my 500 or the X uh, frame, I'm like, I got to go long barrel as possible. Well, I need but, to bring over the uh, 500 snub. Yeah. And strengthen up your wrists a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I want. <laughs> I've already crippled enough. I need some arthritis too. Why yeah. not, man? <laughs> I know your legs hurt. But you I'm know what? Gonna, this will cheer me up. Let's see what he's like. I think I'm screwed. <laughs> uh, this one's from LaRue, which yeah, is you know probably a good rock throw away from my place where I live. Probably about 10, 15 minutes from me. So uh, in Leander, Texas, pretty cool. But this is their Siete, which is their first of a bolt action gun. And this one's in a pistol configuration with their Tranquilo suppressor, which is pretty cool, which it tells you that without the suppressor, it's actually from like here down. All right, I found something my mom likes purely because of the uh, dog prints here. For the next time I see snowfall, definitely I'm gonna have an excuse to have a camoed out rifle. Mom, this one? I like that one. She says yes. The engraving on this is just nuts. All right, does it say? The Trump Deagle. Okay, MSRP 3000. You guys recently saw the one that I made with my Black Tiger, so there's that, we'll put that away. We can make all the content at home with it. This one's gorgeous though. White Tiger, this one has the bottom rail on it, 50 AE again, of course. Gorgeous, gorgeous. The two tigers look good. And then of course, conveniently next to that, I've got a gold one with a gold tiger. This one's warm, this one's been held a lot. <laughs> this is probably people's favorite. That looks really good. They also have, good lord, BFR, which, uh, use your imagination, but they, <laughs> they say it stands for uh, Biggest Finest Revolver. All right, you guys know how much I love my gold titanium uh, Desert Eagle and 50 AE. Would that not be a great match or what? We got a gold titanium uh, Tommy gun here. This is the specifically the 1927A1. This is the first time in all my shooting and how much I love a Tommy gun, it's the first time actually picking one up. And everything they say about the weight is true, I gotta say. Just holding it, seems like the majority of it's pretty back heavy. So that works out decently, but uh, yeah, it's cumbersome for sure, but it's all about style points, man. Check that out. So I think they even come with the, uh, the drum mags too. And I would never use the iron sights, man. You just have to shoot that by the hip. Look at the compensator on that, 45 ACP. I would love to shoot one of these in full auto, but as a civilian, I'll take what I could get. I need to get one of these pretty soon, actually. All right, guys, just stopped by uh, CMMG. You guys have seen probably my video with the Mark 10, the 10 millimeter in the uh, titanium color. For flat out, just plinking and just running through the motions of an AR because of the oversized charging handle and everything, way, way fun. 7.62 by 39 takes the AK mags. 5.7 by 28. They got nine millimeter, I'm holding the 10 mil, all kinds of stuff, 45 ACP. Yeah, you could totally get a Banshee tricked out pretty darn well. So Desert Tech is a rifle I've not shown off on the channel, but man, they are cool. Uh, in short, they are precision bolt bump gun. So that means that the mag gets fed behind the trigger, which elongates the barrel length. So versus a traditional maybe McMillan stock or anything like that, as you guys can see from previous videos I have. So usually it kind of looks like the barrel would start here and then go backward or forward from there. But because of the bolt up design, you could see, I think they lock it for the show, but it gets loaded from the bolt here. So the round gets chambered here. So you get a much longer barrel or a similar size package with a longer barrel uh, or shorter package with same length barrel. All right, we're over at the Gunworks booth and I knew that they are gonna have some eye candy for us here, but this is another one of the Kadex um, chassis, but this is, I'm just looking at the action here. That's gotta be another shy tack round for sure. Either 308 or, I'm sorry, 408 or 375. Forged carbon fiber barrel, the break on this thing is nuts. I think this is what they call the Gunworks hammer, if I'm not mistaken, but my gosh, it is gorgeous. I'm sure it shoots as good as it looks too. Someone left the illumination on on this one too, I'm telling you, shot shows the death of batteries. Pretty nasty with the PRS stock. So this one's definitely more of a SPR long range oriented AK. So that's a pretty cool concept. I like that quite a bit. And of course, I figured I'd stop by and see my friends over at Arkin Optics. I recently made a video with what I thought was just about the best scope for 350 bucks, which is uh, one of these, the SH4, four to 14 by 44. But anyway, check out what I got here. This is the elusive six to 24 by 50. This is the one that's been back ordered forever. It's on the six week lead time right now. I cannot wait for them to be available because I got one on order. I paid, uh, paid the 599 for it, which is just a steal for an EP4 because I made a separate video on the best scope for under thousand dollars, which is an EP4 four to 16. Big news though, the one I'm holding now though is an MOA version. Uh, they were only doing MRAD prior, and a lot of you guys were telling me, I don't know what the percentage of shooters do MRAD versus uh, MOA. I'm more of an MRAD person, but I know that you guys commented saying, oh, if it was an MOA, I would have bought it. But now they do M1 uh, MOA, or they're going to be releasing it soon. 
So that's awesome. They're, uh, they're a new company, but man, they're innovating and launching some stuff very, very quickly. So uh, happy to be a part of it. For the most part, that's kind of uh, my quick coverage for your SHOT Show 2020. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Thank you.